So hi, when we grow this podcast, I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with Echo. And we're asking some questions say about his new single, Good Things. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Oh, it's been incredible, man. I mean, as an artist, you're very um unfortunately it doesn't matter how much you like your song as an art i mean it does like to me it matters how much i like a song because if i'm putting it out i have to live with it it's part of my history now so it's always you know very important how i feel about it but you know it has no bearing on how people are going to react to it or how they're what they're going to think about it and even once you do put it out there's a whole like you know content game behind it and can you actually get it to people and can you get it in front of people's faces and if you do are they going to like it and all those things have kind of hit for us on this one so we got very lucky it's kind of like you know pulling the fu- i mean i'm from vegas so pulling the lever on the slot machine and you know hitting the jackpot on one and you're just like thank you thank you you know the the lever on the slot machine is a great way to a great analogy for like putting out music in 2024 you really are just like rolling the dice hoping it all works out the content and algorithm gods line up for you on this one um the song is fucking great I have been jamming the fuck out of this. It's been on repeat all week. Your publicist sent it over. I'm like, this song's fucking great. As soon as she sent it over, it started popping up on the TikTok for you page. I'm like, I can't get away from it. So I've been jamming it a lot. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. That's super cool. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, So is there any meaning behind the single title or cover art? Um, The title... I mean, the title is basically, you know, the 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 line in the song is where did all the good things go? And mm-hmm. we had, you know, a talk about is the title going to be where did all the good things go with question mark or good things go? Or should we just make it simple, easy as possible and just, you know, good things. So that just kind of ended up being also because it makes it kind of vague. It's like what, you know, what is the song going to be about? Is it, a you know, is it a happy song? Is it a sad song? Is it you can't really tell by the title? I guess it's almost maybe a little misleading as you know, having a song called good things. And it's really about where did all the good things go? It's not necessarily about, you know, a a happy song, so to speak, but, um, that, and I think for the cover art, we, uh, we wanted it to be more nostalgia based, feel a little, you know, early two thousands type feel. And we had a couple different, uh, ideas we were going with, but a lot of stuff we've been doing and I've been doing lately is like, how can we make this the simplest, the cheapest, and the most artistically gratifying to us, you know, because I think that's the name of the game now, period. You know, I think there's a lot of, you know, there's like a label side of things where it's like, we're going to spend all the money and try and, you know, do what we can to make it fit. And there's, you know, the more independent side where it's like, okay, how can, what can we do with the tools that we have at our disposal to kind of make it special and make it fit what we want it to. And that's, I mean, that's what we ended up doing with the cover art. It's what we ended up doing with the music video. That's really what we ended up doing with everything for the song, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do you struggle at all with, like, still getting that full artist gratification while also doing it the most cost-effective way, as, as you mentioned? Or do you get creative with it and you're still getting what you want out of it but not spending the label budget to get those results? Well, I mean, dude, I've been... This has been my bread and butter for a decade Mm -hmm. so this is how i've been operating forever we've always operated on a shoestring budget you know the reason i I, you know for a while i was known for like one take music videos which we're kind of getting back to now my last two music videos just been one take videos and the reason behind that is because it's it's cheaper but when it's cheaper you have to have a cool idea you have to have different things that they can kind of get your message across in a different way. And I've had videos where I've spent $8,000, $10,000, had really cool cameos and all kinds of stuff like that. And does it really translate Mm -hmm. in, into what, what, you know, what the idea of the song should be, or I've always been like, if there's a way we can cut the cost and make up for it with originality or creativity, that's always to me the goal. And I think that's like, what anybody should want to do absolutely fair enough um so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this track oh this track sucked (laughs) writing it was the worst (laughs) okay great start um 
I think that's important because I think when people only look at a finished product, they're just like, oh, I don't know. When I've looked at artists before, I've been like, oh, this guy, he's so good or you're so great. And it must just be so easy and come so you know naturally. And sometimes songs do. And lately, I just call those like freebies. Like if a song comes to you and you're like, you got it and it like hits you and you're in and out in like two hours and you got the whole thing, like you know like the song gods were shining upon you that day so to speak yeah yeah but with this one i think i had a really bad writer's block in general and um i had talked to low spirit to josh and josh is a great songwriter great producer writes a lot for other people and i was like hey man let me come out and hang out with you for a week and let's can we write some songs you know because i'm kind of uh i'm kind of locked up right now I, i don't you know I don't have any good ideas. I'm just kind of floating out here in the ether. And I think he was kind of in the same space. And so we got together and, you know, wrote, I think three or four songs. And this was the one that we were kind of gravitating to the most. And, you know, we wrote the hook and had the idea. And then there's always the part where it's like, okay, we have the hook. We've got the idea. Now go write the verses. And for me, sometimes that's an incredibly daunting thing is like okay now all i can do is fuck this up because now i know it's a good idea <laughs> i know it's a good chorus mm-hmm. the only thing i can do is is hurt this song at this point and so i actually i think i wrote i i spent like three days trying to write the first verse nothing happened i've written like a bunch of different opening lines first halves different parts that didn't really work out and ended up writing a second verse and the second verse was like okay we got the second verse this is cool i like this i don't know how this heavy part's gonna work out but i think it's a cool thing and had to go back to the first verse and uh finally finished that first verse and, and i recorded it and i had to record it like three different times my tone wasn't right the first time i think i was i was trying to channel like some early 2000s maybe like mike shinoda vibes where you know mm-hmm. mike shinoda really lays back in the pocket he's very he doesn't enunciate a lot. If you listen back to a lot of Lincoln Park, especially early stuff, he doesn't. He's not a very intense uh, vocalist on a lot of things. And so I think I was trying to have that vibe with it and it just wasn't working and recorded it again. Then we we thought we had it. And I'm talking about Low Spirit and he was like, hey, man, I think you could do better on the first verse. And I I thought that I already knew it. Like the first half, I was like, I know this could be better, but the idea of going back to it was so daunting that I didn't even want to. But once he said it, it kind of reinforced it. And I was like, fuck. So then I had to go back. (laughs) Yeah. But I was, dude, I I was like, um, I was like, why did you tell me that earlier? You know? And it was kind of this like, well, I didn't want you to, you know, get offended or think this or that. I'm like, dude, that's no more. There's no more of a a friend move than to be like, Hey man, you could do better. Mm -hmm. Like, I think you're better than this go back try it again and i did and i'm glad i did because it's so much better and you know i had to spend another half day trying to figure it out but did and and i'm glad for it so it was not an easy process by any stretch of the imagination but some songs are like that man some songs take that some songs are like like i said in an hour you're in and out it just it hits you right and some you know you overthink it a little too much or or, you know you just have to wait for it to come absolutely so First verse took three days to get. Second verse seems like it came, you know, early in the process. So start to finish, what was like the timeline for for this song? With the amount, I think I had to record the verses maybe four or five different times. Shit. Tone wasn't right, then the tone was right, and then we changed the verse and then went back and I got like sick and then my voice sucked and then had to get, so it was like. My God. It was it was a lot. So it was maybe, you know, I don't know. We maybe did like three or four sessions. Wow. Just on on these verses. Shit. So how did you keep up like that motivation? Was it purely just because the instrumental was just that good that you had to put something to it? It was a chorus for me. Okay. It was like, I know this is a good song. And I, yeah. I know it's here and I know I have it. I just yeah. have to find it. And it was like you know, it was challenging myself and having to, you know, figure out where it was and what I wanted to say and, and how I can 
bring my own experience into it the best and not speaking broad terms trying to be more specific to my story yeah uh, but also relatable to other people and you know things like that but it was always like i know the song is incredible i just need to figure out my where my voice is on it yeah yeah so you you brought low spirit in you guys wrote the song together was it always the plan to have him on the song as a feature did that naturally progress while you guys were writing together this one it was always uh the idea to, to have him on the chorus. Gotcha. For sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Uh, so I want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this track and what it means to you. I think uh, the thing I kept going back to while writing is because, I mean, Josh is a, a great singer and he, you know, there's like some singers where it's like there's no corny lyrics because if they sing it, no matter what they sing, it just sounds fucking awesome. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's some people like, no matter what you sing, it sounds fucking corny. <laughs> and I, I don't know why that is, but it's just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, but I think for me, it's the line is, it, uh, is all I'll be a broken thing. Like to me, that, that line always was like, and when I, when I kept running into like these writing problems and I was like hitting uh, these blocks and, you know, just, I think the whole concept of the song just resonated with me so heavily that is what kept pushing me to figure it out and to dive deeper so that that's a big one for me and then when i wrote the first line of my second verse like uh am i flogged from the fabric or just got stained from the things that have happened that was like a a line that i was like okay every song i want to have a you know what i call like a tattoo lyric mm. like yeah. something that stands out enough to where somebody would like tattoo that or write it on their notebook or or something like that and to me i was like okay that that was one that i, I think was was special for me oh yeah i fucking love that concept i because i i can point out like some of my favorite songs that have those tattoo lyrics and it's just it makes so much sense but no one's ever kind of said it out loud i guess that's fucking awesome yeah i think it's important i think that's like i guess artistic integrity and and having you know fan experience and mm -hmm. caring enough to be like okay what can I dig deep enough to where somebody's going to relate enough to, to what I'm saying or not even if, you know, a lot of times. So I, Josh and I talked a lot about this is like, oddly enough, the more specific you are to your story, the more relatable you are on a macro level. And it doesn't make any sense when, when, you know, when you're writing, you're like, okay, if I'm more broad, I'll be able to reach more people, but in a sense, you're kind of watering it down. And what really matters is the authenticity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in what you're saying, not necessarily an idea, you know, so yeah. being as, as specific as possible to your own story and what you're thinking, if you can do that. And a lot of times it's really hard to do. And a lot of times you don't want to do it and you got to really hit in a certain space. And it might be a window that's like this big that you have to kind of take uh, advantage of when it's there. So yeah, I mm -hmm. think that's, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, so where was your headspace at while you guys were writing this track? I mean, when we were writing the chorus, it was, I mean, that was kind of the idea. It was, I think we were in a studio and he had been going through some writing, you know, issues and the whole climate of being an artist right now can be just super difficult. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of, you know, um, expectation and there's a lot of competition and you're constantly looking at everything else and it can be all consuming and it's hard to have a life outside of this if you want to be successful in what you're doing and it's, it gets to a point where it's like where i used to love this like where did that go like where did that feeling the feeling i used to get from doing this go and where did you know when we used to just be able to to pick up a skateboard and go you know, leave the house and not come back home. So the lights, you know, to the street lights come on and mm -hmm. that was all that mattered. And that was all you needed. And why is it so hard to get back to that? Why is it so, why is this just so difficult? Like, why am I questioning myself so much? Why am I getting locked up writing right now? Why, yeah. what is happening? Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the ideas that were going through my head uh, when, when we were writing everything. Gotcha. Now, how do you, deal and have like a, a work-life balance for yourself so that you're not getting burned out and you continue to love what you're doing while you know working so hard you're putting out a song every month you're doing a shitload of content around it you're touring you're doing everything and you're doing it yourself 
Uh, I'm, I'm not the guy to ask because I don't. <laughs> you just yeah. you just live and breathe <laughs> the music, and that's just the way it goes. Yeah, I'm sort of in a perpetual state of burnout that I kind of come out of every once in a while and sort of see a light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is like certain things. I think you just have to do stuff for yourself that's uh, kind of all-consuming, which is to me there's certain stuff like i have to do like something physical every day or or you know whether it's me doing like a boxing lesson or skating or something that has to take all of my attention because if not i'll be thinking about content or what views are at or what to do here or what's there or a song that i haven't written or whatever it is i think it's doing things that require all of your attention mm-hmm. absolutely right. now within the music do you have any sort of balance so that like you like there's certain times you're focusing on the the music and sometimes you're focusing on the content or is it all just like as it comes you're dealing with it kind of thing yeah i'm sort of an as it comes i deal with it sort of sort of thing i'm sort of like trying to do everything all the time Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think for me the most important thing always is writing so i'll always try and see you know is there anything in the tank for writing today? That's always the priority. And if there is, then that's where the day goes. And if I start and there's nothing there, then I'll try and kind of, you know, backwards move things around like, okay, let's, well, I can do content here. Or I can do this or I can do that. There's always something you can do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's really just figuring out what, you know, what you're really, what I'm into at that moment, what I feel like I can give my, time and passion to what, what i'm really feeling gotcha makes sense makes sense uh, so this one should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this track for new listeners in three words no more no less heavy okay uh nostalgia okay and authentic there you go those are good yeah Perfect. hell yeah um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the track? I think release, you know, I think, yeah. uh, a, a feeling of, um, like connection. I think the idea of this is like for people to be like, okay, I get it. I connect. And the, the release of like, ah, somebody gets it and, and you can kind of get that, those feelings out a little bit, you know? Yeah. Like a yeah. feeling of catharsis. Yeah, very, yeah. very much. Gotcha. Yeah, right. So what is your favorite memory that you've made while creating this single? Favorite memory while making this song mm-hmm. was probably when Josh sent me his lyrics or his vocals for the bridge. Okay. Which is where he does like the screams. Mm-hmm. And that's something I've never heard low spirit do ever. And I know yeah. that was like super far out of his wheelhouse. And it wasn't even anything that we had discussed as like a thing that he was going to do. When he sent me that, I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. This is, I just laughed. I was like, what is, this is insane. Like, this is so crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah, a very surprising and awesome moment. Yeah. Did, did you feel like any anxiety or hesitation on his half with him sending that over to you since he's never done that before? No, he's one of those people I don't ever question or worry about anything he's going to do. I always know whatever he's going to do is going to be incredible. And I don't. Yeah, there's there's not even a, a piece of me. It's like, oh, is this is going to be good. It's more like how good is this going to be? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, we've talked about the song to death. Gotta ask what's mm-hmm. coming up next for you. More music. I uh, got some tours coming up here very soon. I think like end of this month and May and June. Mm-hmm. Um, some more uh, really cool features, some features that are outside of the rock realm or uh, some stuff in, like the rap realm, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just a lot of music, a lot of content, just continuing to to keep going with, with what, what we have right now and try and ride this wave as much as we can and just keep putting out the best stuff and, uh, you know, try and connect and stay connected with the fans as much as possible and, and make that experience as fulfilling for them as it is for us. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. yeah. Right. Sounds good. Uh, so for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour. You're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What is your snack of choice? Dude, I'm so, I'm so boring. 
Oh no. I'm so boring. Okay. Cuz I try dude maybe when I first started touring it was different, but now it's when you're on the road for tw- for 2 months mm-hmm. and every day is another gas station. I'm just like I I have to try and eat as like clean as possible, so I don't really do like the gas station pizza or taquitos and shit like that anymore. Oh, good. Or you know, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't do the candy Mm-hmm. anymore so my do my go-to is like i'm a caffeine junkie so i'll get like an energy drink and i'll probably do like some like if i if i'm doing like chips i'll do some doritos you know okay. but i'm probably more so like sticking to to like edamame chips or something like something that has like the least the least amount of ingredients mm-hmm. yeah and preferably ingredients that i can pronounce is like what i will go for if i can or like like a protein bar or something like that yeah fair yeah. enough the doritos are for the cheat day no, it's like the that's like the worst answer because i have like friends that are like whatever is the craziest new candy like they are getting it yeah. and they're going hard yeah. and i respect it i just can't do that for myself yeah, yeah i mean it's a fair enough point like you're on the road two months you gotta you gotta stay healthy at some point you're burning off the calories but you're still making yourself feel like shit exactly yeah i'm still sitting in a van for six hours not moving Jeez. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the, the most boring answer you could have given us is just a bottle of water because we've gotten that before and we're like dude that's not a fucking snack come on <laughs> no, just... <sighs> Jesus yeah. um so on the topic of food if your project was a dish what dish would it be and why it would have to be a dish that incorporates so many other dishes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm trying to think of what that could possibly be because that, that's always been our, like I've never really stuck into one genre one sound or one vibe I, I like to incorporate as much as I can into everything that I do so it'd be like a jambalaya of sorts or something you know where I can throw everything kind of into the mix mm-hmm. and you know make different flavors out of you know, you know different ingredients that wouldn't normally mix mm-hmm. which yeah. is a fun thing for me to do so i don't know what that it'd be like a buffet man it would be like what do you want you yeah. know yeah. i got it. go grab yeah. it oh yeah that was yeah, my right. first thought when you said like a bunch of different dishes in one i was just like he's going for the buffet answer buffet. it's coming yeah. mm-hmm. it's also that's another vegas i guess move <laughs> yeah damn yeah, right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for these last couple questions, we're actually going to shift away from music, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Great. So we're actually going to go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be? Unfortunately not. Like, the we're going to kill okay. you thing. Yeah, no. Uh, so <laughs> if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I mean, I'm I'm just like a sucker for like a really good like steak dinner. Like, mm-hmm. I would just do uh, like a steak and lobster with like all the sides. So that's one thing I've realized. Like, I think a lot of people think they like a steak dinner, but what they like are the sides. So that's what it really comes down to. If you got like the good mac and cheese, you got like a good mashed potato and a vegetable, then you're like good to go. Mm-hmm. So that would probably be what I would go with. And for a drink, I'm not I'm not a big drink guy. Like I don't drink alcohol. And I do like sparkling water, which I think a lot of people don't, or yeah, or maybe right. that's like more popular now than it used to be. Oh no, people still hate it. I fucking love sparkling I'm water. I'm a big though. sparkling water that, hater. You're a hater? Oh yeah. Dude, you got it. You got it. You you're missing out. You are. Topo Chico? Do you fuck with Topo Chico? I fuck with Topo Chico hard. Topo Chico is is so good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would probably do a Topo Chico. There you go. Yeah. All right. Amen. The great one. The great for one goes pretty hard. Oh shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Speak right. my language. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? Mm-hmm. I'm like pressed to say something like Gotham because it would be cool, but then it's like Gotham is a shithole. You know, you don't want to go there. Yeah, yeah. I don't like, think you'd make it out alive. Horrible. No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of fictional worlds now. Like you have like Lord of the Rings, but that's not that sick. Yeah. The Game of Thrones is not dangerous. that thick either. Yeah. Like they seem cool, but when you actually imagine being in it, it's like no, nah, I wouldn't. I'd like, rather like, watch where, it. Where, where am I gonna brush my teeth? Is like where I always think when I think of of stuff like that. Damn. There. Maybe like the Matrix. If I could go into the Matrix, I think it would be way sick. Yeah. You'd be a way But then the whole part of being used as a battery by machines oh. also kind of sucks. 
Yeah. But yeah, I'll go with that for now. Damn, I wish I had more time. Matrix. Okay. Right. Well, the Matrix so, is chill, so yeah. it's fine. The Matrix is chill, but it's not it's not the best answer. It's not the best one I could give, but it's the best one I have on top of my head. I mean, I feel like it's it's pretty cool if you're like with Neo and like the gang. So what are your guys' answers? Maybe this will Frog and Toad. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Mm-hmm. What is yours? Diary of a Wimpy Kid. That'd be the universe you want to be in? Mm-hmm. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, why? I don't know. Be cool to go back to high school. <laughs> I had a good but time. But would you go back as a kid or would you go back as the age you are now? Oh fuck. I, I mean I guess <laughs> I would have to uh, I, I guess if I would have to blend in. Now, I wanna like... I wanna hang out with uh what fucking Greg and Greg. uh oh my God. and Rowley. his boy Rowley. I and I don't think I could hang out with them at twenty one years old. That'd be a little you weird. Hang out with Roderick. Nah, I'm all right. He's a dick. <laughs> what the hell, dude? Roderick is the fucking. Oh my god. Okay. I would say yours is Frog and Toad. I don't Frog know what that toad. is. Oh my god. Did you not read Frog and Toad? It's like it's it's a kids book. Um, it's a frog and a toad, and they just they just chill out. They just you know go on picnics and stuff together. It's very like calm. Nothing like crazy happens there. They're just living life, having a good time. Is it yeah, like like, uh, like Arthur Arthur vibes or what? Or is it in like um, a swamp? Or... It's in like like a little forest. It's not really Arthur because it's not like they, it's not like lessons are being learned or anything. It's just quite literally just a chill ass frog and toad hanging out. Dude, Magic School does would be pretty sick. Dude. That would be see. That yeah, might be my new that. answer when people ask me. <laughs> yeah. Magic. I mean, yeah, Magic School would be fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person oh. who's spoken to has actually said it is the most important question. Oh, wow. No pressure. What is your favorite color? <laughs> this is the most important question? Yeah. Most important Why question that? ever. Why is that? It's because it says so much about you as a person. Does it? No. Mm. <laughs> no? I mean, sure. To me, yeah. I have a friend. Mm-hmm. Her favorite color is uh, sparkles, and I was like, "That's not a fucking color. What is that?" <laughs> so yeah. every chance I have to kind of like talk shit, I do that. Yeah, uh, it's uh, like fucking Austin Knight saying his favorite color is diamond. <laughs> what the fuck is that, dude? It's ridiculous. I mean, that's on the same level as sparkle, right? Yeah, Pretty exactly. Much. Yeah, that's what's it's just ridiculous. Hmm. What's my favorite color? I don't know, man. My wardrobe is a lot of black. I know I'm wearing white right now. This is a not a this is a very rare occurrence. Yeah. Pro- I mean, probably probably black. Is that like a super emo answer? It's well, fucking, okay. So, dude. <laughs> to me, black is not a color. It is the absence of color. Exactly. So, so it doesn't count. It to me, it doesn't count. Shane will take that answer. Yeah. So I she's gonna say. Not. So if you had a real answer, <laughs> if you could pick an actual color, that'd be great. Uh, then I would just go with gray because it's the closest to, to black, I guess. Yeah. All right. There you go. All Cheat right, code. I'll take it. Um, I'll take it. So as Gloria said, that's all the questions you have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Damn. Let's see. Well, I mean, I'm about to hit the road and go on tour. I got some dates with a friend of mine, Chris Webby and Greaves and Ryan Oaks. We're playing five shows. And then after that, uh, I hit the road with From Ashes to New and Point North and Fix and Elijah. And I think there's 30 something shows on that tour. Yeah. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. I'm really excited. And yeah, that's, that's it. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you. It's been Echo and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.